I'm willing to bet that most of you, the vast majority of you, are not going to be able to tell where I am today. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue. I am inside the Lake District National Park, but if I was stood here four years ago, then I wouldn't have been. Today I've come to an area known as Borrowdale, or to most people, the other Borrowdale, because this isn't the Borrowdale that lies just south of Keswick. This is the Borrowdale that sits between the A6 and the M6 on the stretch that runs between Shap and Kendall. And this became part of the Lake District National Park when the boundary was extended in August 2016. Now you may be wondering why I've come to a rarely visited corner of the Lake District National Park. And to answer that question, I need to explain a little bit about my approach to landscape photography. Essentially what I like to do is to thoroughly research a location, to visit many times and try to understand what my composition is. And then to keep going back and back and back until I get the right conditions to get the perfect shot. But that means that my photography lacks a certain degree of spontaneity. And when I'm faced with a new location, I can struggle. So this week, what I'm doing is I'm exploring a brand new location that I've never visited before to see if I can inject a little bit of spontaneity into my photography. As you can see, the light is very, very flat today. There is hardly any contrast anywhere. And so that means that I'm going to be focusing on more intimate compositions. Now, I tried this a couple of weeks ago and I wasn't really successful. And the only way that I'm going to improve is if I keep practicing. So that's what today is all about. Thankfully, I haven't had to come very far this morning before I found something with potential. I'm literally 200 meters from the road and I've come to this ford that's crossing over Borrow Beck. And alongside the ford are these stones. The water is rushing over those stones and I think this could be my very first shot of the day. The first thing that caught my eye was this stone that sits on the edge of the ford. And I like the way that the water falls down on either side of the stone. So what I'm doing is I'm picking that out with a telephoto lens. And the next thing I want to think about is what kind of shutter speed do I want to use. And so what I did is I put on my polarizer, which will take some of the glare off of the wet rocks, and my six stop little stopper. And then I started off at eight seconds and then I bumped my ISO up from 100, 200, 400, 800 all the way up to 1600 and then that allowed me to drop my shutter speed right down to about half a second and it's just a case then of picking the one that I like the best and I actually think for this the optimum shutter speed that I want to be looking for is something like one second maybe down as quick as half a second. Now obviously I don't want to be shooting at ISO 1600 so in order to get a shutter speed of half a second what I've had to do is to take out my six stop ND filter and replace that with a three stop ND filter. Unfortunately I don't have a dedicated three stop ND filter so what I've had to do is to take my three stop hard edge grad turn it upside down and slot that in instead. I'm pretty happy with that first image. It's one of those images that you can only take in overcast conditions. If you tried to do that when the sun was out, you'd get hot spots all over the image and it would be almost impossible to get the exposure right. The other thing that I like about that image is it flows from left to right. Now, most of us in the Western world read from left to right. And so that's the way that our brain works. So if we create an image that flows from left to right, that is kind of harmonious and tranquil. If we want to create discord in our image, if we want to really grab the viewer's attention, 
And then we might want to create an image that works from right to left in the opposite direction to what we're expecting. So peaceful and tranquil, left to right, grab the viewer's attention, right to left. Well, that's a theory anyway. Once I'd finished down at the Ford, I picked up my gear and I just walked. I walked for about three miles and I was just sort of soaking up the atmosphere, taking in the place. I got a kind of lonely feeling out of the place. It's very isolated, very, very peaceful. And it was raining on and off um, and I didn't take any more shots. I was looking out for different things and I saw lots of potential opportunities, but nothing that really grabbed my attention. And now I've come to a point where I've got to make a decision. I've come to a fork in a road and I either carry on or head up into the hills. Unfortunately, that didn't really work for me. Uh, I hiked up there for about an hour, and when I got up there, pretty much the only thing that was of any interest was some sort of telecommunications tower. Uh, so I've come back down again now, and I've only got about two hours left of light, so I ought to be heading back to the car, and if I see anything, I'll stop and take another shot. How about this lovely little scene? I, I am, I don't know, half a mile from the car, so I've made it almost all the way back to the car. And I've got, I've, I've got this scene, obviously I didn't see this coming up because I was going in the other direction. So it's always useful to retrace your steps when you're doing this sort of thing. Anyway, I, what I like about this, you've got the two leading lines. You've got the river leading in from the right, you've got the path leading in from the left. And on the, on the side of the valley, you've got trees on one side, you've got the hills on the other, and there's even a decent sky. Now, there is no direct light at the moment, which is a bit of a shame really, but I do think there's just enough contrast in this scene for me to be able to pull it off. I really enjoyed my time exploring the other Borrowdale. I mean, it's typical of how I explore new locations. I simply went for a nice walk and allowed the images to come to me. But it wasn't particularly efficient. I walked for about 10 miles and I only came away with two images. Admittedly, images that I am pretty pleased with. So today, I'm gonna to try another approach. This morning I've come to Great Mail Fell and my plan for today is to limit myself to a relatively small area, namely these dead trees that sit on the side. And rather than waiting for the compositions to come to me, I'm going to go in search of them and we will see if this tactic is more productive. Now normally what people might do in this situation is get their camera out and go around handheld looking for compositions. But because I shoot YouTube videos, what I'm going to do is go around with my video camera. So let's cue the B-roll montage. You're watching me steady, I know. Wondering why I'm so hollow. You're showing me all of your best. While I'm giving you what I got left. I got calm. So what do you think? Did you see anything that you liked? I rather like this tree here. This is a really simple composition. 
isolate the bottom of the tree to really show off the shapes of the branches. And then on the horizon in the distance we have a couple of the smaller trees. Now this is quite a simple composition, it's quite graphic and I think that success here depends on being able to place the elements in a pleasing way. Not far from that first shot, I found this tree here. Now this is an even simpler composition. What I want to do is I want to put the tree on the left-hand side of the frame and leave a lot of open space to the right-hand side. The reason I want to do that is because the tree is leaning towards the right and the branches are pointing towards the right. If I were to put the tree on the right-hand side of the frame, then it would be leaning out of the frame, and that's not going to look quite right. Unfortunately, this area here to the right-hand side is quite messy, so I can't do that. So I'm going to have to shoot this in portrait orientation. The other decision I've got to make is whether or not I want to clone out this branch that's sticking out. Now, I can't make my mind up whether I like that or not. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the two shots now and you tell me which one you like the best, with the branch or without. The other composition that stood out for me was of this one, of this small tree that's been bent right over by the wind. What I like about this is if you get low enough you can isolate the branches of the tree against the sky and that draws the eye through the scene towards a little male felt in the distance. I did try another composition using a slightly larger tree a bit further down the hill. I had both trees in the frame and a little male felt in the distance. Now, I think that this shot is slightly better because it's simpler. But once again, I'm going to ask for your opinion. Which one do you prefer? This composition is very similar to the last one. We've got the tree on the left hand side and we have the branches of the tree coming out towards the right. And then in the distance, once again, we've got little Melfell. It doesn't come as any surprise to me that the compositions I picked out today involved isolating individual subjects that sat on the outskirts of the wood. When I came into the woodland, everything started to get a lot more confusing and a lot more chaotic, and I actually struggled to pick out compositions that I liked. Now, the only way that we're going to improve this is to keep practicing, and fortunately I'm going to have plenty of opportunity to practice next week when I'm heading down to the Chilterns, where I'm originally from, to photograph the woodland down there. God help me.